hey y'all what's good beautiful people it's your girl tay and i am here yet again with another update video so definitely make sure you guys smash that like button comment down below subscribe plus push your post notification bell button so that way anytime i upload a video you will be notified happy friday you guys first friday of the year um i hope you guys is year is starting off uh pretty good i mean lord only knows what they got in store what, what what's gonna be in store for each of us throughout 2022 but anyway moving right into the updates for today give me a moment to pull everything up i think i spoke about this yesterday didn't i actually no i did not so this is something I found to be interesting, wanted to share with you guys. Not sure if I shared it with you guys already. But a state is offering remote workers a one-time stimulus check worth up to 7500 if they want to move there next. Okay, so the remote... The new remote worker grant is available to individuals who relocate to Vermont and became full-time residents while working for an out-of-state employer on or after February the 1st of 2022. Okay, the state is also offering grants to workers as a part of their relocating worker program. Similar to the remote worker grant, the relocating worker grant program encourages workers to move to the state to work for the employers in the Green Mountain State. Okay. Okay. The program offers reimbursement grants of up to $7,500 to workers across the country who moved to Vermont on or after January the 1st of last year, okay? Like the remote worker grant, individuals must be subject to Vermont income tax and earn um, the state's livable wage. These new programs build upon Vermont's previously successful recruit recruitment initiatives and aim to attract new residents to the state, grow the work workforce, um, and support employers facing workforce uh, challenges. That is pretty much it for that. Y'all let me know if there are any of you guys who are actually have utilized this particular grant, if you know anything about it. Um, and just for my own curiosity, how is it in Vermont? Like, what's the weather like in Vermont? Is it cold? Is that a generally cold state? It's an in-between state. It's like 63 degree weather, 69 degree weather. Is that y'all norm? Or, you know, is it hotter? I don't really know much about Vermont. Um, but I definitely, you guys know I want to move. I don't know if I still try to decide if I want to move out of state. But I do know that I want want to um move uh soon so moving on from that let's get into what's going on at the capitol i, I think i saw some information regarding um that um, first thing I want to talk about, of course, is we've got some medication recalls going on. OK, one particular uh, recall is for metformin, I think is what it's called. It's a pretty uh, common medication that is given to people who have diabetes. OK, it says a new recall of extended release metformin has been announced by the U.S. Food and Administration, um, the FDA, due to concerns about a potentially cancer causing chemical with uh, some health experts asking if manufacturing processes need to be improved to avoid such recalls in the first place. The new recall was actually announced on December the 28th of last year. It affects 33 lots of metformin extended release tablets. These are in 700 150 milligrams distributed by Viona Pharmaceuticals Inc. As with all recent recalls of the extended release metformin stretching back to 2019, um, the latest recall is based on, hold on, it just went off screen. Um, the latest recall is based on out of expectation levels of of a chemical called and i cannot pronounce this extremely long words so y'all have to excuse me but the short term is ndma okay n as in nancy d as in dog m as in mary a as in apple um m ndma is classified as a probable human carcinogen okay um, based on laboratory tests showing it has the potential to cause growth of cancer cells there is no indication that the levels of the ndma found in recalled batches of metformin have um, any immediate health effects and recalls are not based on any reported adverse events so they're basically trying to say that this is a warning that they're not actually putting this recall out because maybe some people have gotten sick from this medication already but just they're just doing their due diligence to let you know that we found a, a cancer causing agent in this medication this is why a lot of the reasons why i'm hesitant to take medicine from the doctor in the first place uh, you know i'm not trying to tell anyone to stop taking their medication i by all means i believe that if you take medication on a regular basis for whatever ailments you may have i know i'm one of those people i have high blood pressure you know what i mean so i have to take medication to keep my blood pressure in check but there's a lot of medication that they have offered me you know 
um, that I had to turn down because the side effects were way worse than what they were actually trying to treat. And I think that that's just general across the board for everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. There are always side effects to these medications. And these are the things, again, I wish that they would be um, working on. Instead of all of the other nonsense, we trying to build walls or break down walls and worrying about, um, you know, what's going on in sister brother countries and things of that nature. Yes, that stuff is important, but there's a lot of stuff. And, I, and, you know, this is where I agree with you guys and saying that there's a lot of stuff in home, in house here in the great U.S. of A. that they need to be working on. And this is one of them. This is medication. You're giving this medication to people, grown people, children, babies, people's babies that have only been here on the earth maybe one day and they're injecting them with medications if they're um if their illness or whatever it is that's bothering them as a newborn baby is serious enough. And a lot of times I don't believe that there's been enough research done. You know what I mean? There's always that percentage of, oh, well, this is a possibility that it could happen. And it'd be just somebody's luck that they end up being in that small percentage and end up having something happen to them. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't always sue. And even if you do, you don't always win. And at the end of the day, having millions of dollars isn't going to correct whatever may have been messed up by these medications. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, health is your wealth. And if you ain't got that, it's not really a whole lot that you can do. But that was my little rant for the day. Um, it says instead, they are simply uh, a precautionary measure to avoid the possibility of future cancer cases due to N uh, NDMA. So if there are any of you guys that is taking this medicine, like I said, this is a pretty common medication. I know because it was offered to me. Thank God. I didn't know anything about it. I just know because there was uh, my kid's grandfather. This is the medication that he takes for his diabetes. So I'm familiar with this medication. And like I said, they offered it to me um, because I was pre-diabetic or and pre-diabetic whatever the case may be but yeah no you're not about to have me taking 15 pills a day that's not going to happen so um but if you guys are taking this medication you know what i'm saying especially my seasoned seniors i highly suggest that you guys take a look at the medication that you do have if this sounds familiar and have a conversation with your primary care physician to see if there are some additional options um, that they can give you to help control the particular virus that it's treating not virus the particular uh illness or ailment or whatever it is condition that that medication is treating okay um there's more on this i really don't think that any the rest of this is is significant i'm trying to see if there's any contact information um and i don't see anything you could always contact the fda for more information or look this up on the fda website but yeah i think the best thing for you guys to do right now would be most likely to have a conversation with your primary care physician just to see that they can take you off of it and get you something better or different um okay now let's talk about what's going on you know with the Republic, not Republicans, with the politicians. It says Senate Democrats vow they'll pass voting rights legislation with or without Republicans. Here's what their proposals would do. OK, so according to this source, it says Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has set the stage for a showdown this month over voting rights, pledging to muscle through sweeping new federal legislation aims to uh, at counteracting moves by Republicans in state capitals to restrict as access to the ballot. But to do so, he must accomplish a near impossible feet and persuade reluctant senators in his own caucus to change the chamber's rules to bypass the 60 uh the 60 vote threshold needed to overcome republican repeated blockades of the bill so they're basically like i said i talked to you guys about this yesterday before I, this article had even came out or before i saw it where um uh Chuck Schumer is basically trying to find a way to make moves without having to include um, their Republican counterparts. So they want to implement a bill that would restrict the Republicans from canceling, not canceling or blocking anything that they try to put put out, hoping that if this goes through, he can get through the um, push through the build back better plan. OK, because as you guys have seen. Now I'm going to jump into it. It says, despite supporting voting measures, two of his fellow Democrats, Arizona Senator uh, Kirsten Sinema and West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, have defended the so-called filibuster, which requires 10 Republicans to support advancing legislation in an evenly divided 50-50 Senate. OK, time is running out for the Democrats who are racing to establish new ground rules for voting ahead of this year's midterm elections that will determine which party controls Congress. Republican-controlled legislators, particularly in battleground 
battleground states that saw increased turnout and Democratic victories in 2020 already have enacted a raft of new laws that limit uh, absentee balloting, impose additional ID requirements and otherwise create new hurdles to voting and more restrictions are likely to pass in upcoming state legislative sessions. So they've got a lot going on right now. I told you guys that for them is more or less they're making all of these good what they consider to be good moves because they're trying to solidify their positions in power and keep their seats. Okay. Democrats don't want to lose their seats. Republicans are just waiting for somebody to fall off of the bandwagon so they can, snap, you know, move right on in there um, and take control. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that would be, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that I feel like the Democrats are doing a better job because you guys already know how I feel about that. Um, but I definitely do believe that a lot of things would be much worse if um, Republicans hold a lot of power okay that's that's just my personal opinion because we know that they are more so for the wealthy and not for those who are not wealthy okay they are more so for people who are like them okay who have the ability to live and sweep through a pandemic without even breaking a sweat they're not for the little people they don't care too much about people who are suffering um in the united states of america so i definitely don't want them to get control schumer has set a deadline of martin luther king jr day on january 17th to vote on rule changes if republicans once again block consideration of the bills. The looming confrontation comes as some GOP leaders have begun to voice support for a more modest approach of uh, updating an arcane 19th century law known as the, the Electoral Count Act that details how Congress counts electoral college votes from each state. Okay, Schumer has insisted that an overhaul of the Electoral Count Act is no substitute for bigger electoral reforms. And President Joe Biden is expected to make the case for broader federal voting rights legislation when he travels on Tuesday to Georgia, a key political battleground and a cradle of the country's civil rights movement. Okay, as the Senate gears up to tackle voting rights, here's a look at the various legislation proposals. Um, so let's see what they're talking about doing. Um, so we have a bill coming from a group of Democrats. This includes Manchin um, and Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. Uh, sweeps into one place broad changes to election and campaign finance laws. The goal is to set baseline rules that all states must follow in administering federal elections. Okay, that doesn't sound bad if it's something that's pretty much the same across the board. It also seeks to safeguard against partisan takeovers of election administration, ban uh, partisan gerrymandering of congressional districts and mandate disclosure of donors to keep pocketed dark money groups that seek to influence elections. Okay, so it sounds like they're basically trying to cut out exactly what they think is going on with Manchin. I told you guys in a, a previous video that they think that the reason why Manchin is going so hard and going against the um, Build Back Better Act is because he received some funding for some people who they think may have influenced his decision. Um, and there, the, the, you know, there was documentation that was found, I believe, or evidence to suggest that he received large lump sums of cash um, in donation to his campaign just before he started coming out saying that he was against the Build Back Better plan. I think that that is ridiculous in, in the first place. The whole reason why they were doing the Build Back Better, not the, the Build Back Better plan, but the whole reason why they were um, trying to do the child tax credit extension is to cut down on child poverty. They're trying to make sure that homes with families, not to say with children, but not to say that other homes don't need assistance, but specifically they're looking at the percentage rates of child poverty and child poverty is really, 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 really high in the great U S of a. So they're trying to make sure that they cut down on that. And the better way for a, a good way for them to cut down on that is to give people a higher amount of child tax credits. Okay. Now mansion wants to put work, um, requirements in place and and there's a lot of things. There's just a lot of things that's wrong with that. Like I said, I hope that they really stand their ground and not allow him to crumble everything. Because realistically, realistically, if you're saying everybody has to have a work, uh, 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 there's a work environment, there's grand your grandparents out there that are taking care of children who have already retired. They're not working anymore. They're receiving SSI. They may be taking care of three children. They're living on an already fixed income. And now you're saying that they don't qualify for the child tax credit at the end of the year because they haven't worked. Same thing with aunties and uncles and anyone who is taking care of children that do not belong to you. Another thing that's an issue is that there are people who are literally physically and mentally disabled to the point where they can't work. So they are also living on a fixed income, probably getting social security or some type of disability um, payments. Um, and for that reason, 
because they don't work, they are also not eligible to receive the extended or the updated amount for the child tax credit. Another issue with that for me is the fact that there is a cap. You have to have made $60,000 or below, which to me isn't really all that great. But when you put the workplace in uh, eligibility requirement in place, that pretty much cancels out everybody who they were trying to target with this um, added benefit for child tax credit. So everybody who is not working. And then on top of that, if you're working a uh, in, as an independent contractor, if you are a Uber driver, if you are a barber, you know, if you if you were doing anything in which you don't receive a regular paycheck, you will not be able to receive the child tax credit. I, I don't think that people really realize how serious this is. And I'm pretty sure he knows just exactly what he's doing. And like I said, the fact that he has received some money um, prior to him coming out and saying that he's against the Build Back Better plan. Yeah, it is kind of making him look suspicious. They're all suspicious to me in the first place, but that didn't really help. Moving on from that, though. Um, let's talk about these vaccine mandates because we've got some mandates that are going to be starting as of Monday, January the 10th. Employees at companies with at least 100 workers will need to be vaccinated against the virus or tested weekly starting January the 10th. OK, President Joe Biden's vaccine mandate is scheduled to start January the 10th. It will require businesses with 100 or more employees to either get fully vaccinated or provide negative um, uh, virus test results weekly. Though there is a grace period to allow for a compliance, the regulations will cover roughly 84 million workers, according to the administration. However, the vaccine requirement could be blocked again pending the Supreme Court decision on Friday. And I believe that it was actually blocked. Let me go to the next article that I, article, article that I found. Let me just see. A federal appeals court has declined to lift the ba a ban in three states on President Joe Biden's um, vaccine mandate for workers who contract with the federal government. No, so that's something different. OK, so um, I think that other article. Let me go back to it. Let me just make sure because I don't want to give you all the wrong information. Yeah. So this article actually came out um, yesterday, which was the six. Um, and they're saying that there is another uh, court hearing today actually. And I haven't seen anything from today suggesting that um, this hasn't been blocked again or it, it has been blocked again. So we're just going to have to wait. But it says in November, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit had granted a temporary stay against the rule. But in a 2-1 decision on December the 17th, a three judge panel for the Sixth Circuit said the Occupational Safety and Health Administration has demonstrate demonstrated the pervasive danger that the virus poses to workers, unvaccinated workers in particular, in their workplaces. So they're trying to say, which obviously, yeah, that makes sense. If you have a lot of people in the same area and they're all contagious, then you run the risk of having to shut down completely because everybody is spreading the disease along. And I 100 percent agree with that. I understand that. I have no issues with that. You know what I mean? Again, my thing is, is that it's getting to the point now where I feel like eventually um, they're going to start taking choices away. And if this is supposed to be a democracy, it's like either we have a say so or we don't. If y'all get what I'm saying. Um, but that is actually all the information that I have for you guys today. Nothing has come out that has changed with emergency snap maximum benefits for the month of January. Some of you guys are already asking me about February, but we're not even done with January. So, of course, I cannot give you any information um, about February when we're not in that month and we're not done with uh, January. Also, there are a lot of glitches going on. A lot of companies are having issues with their uh, computer online systems and all that. Walmart is one of them. Um, there is talk about people who have ordered at their usual home store and then they're getting uh, their orders are getting routed to a store that's further away from them. It's just a lot going on. So with that being said, I want Want everyone to be mindful that because the world is shifting there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now especially with technology that there's a really big 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 possibility that a lot of the states um, may have been uh approved for emergency snap maximum benefits for the month of january but maybe it's just not updating because of there's a glitch in the system i don't know that to be true no information was released saying that that is the situation one way or another States really could just be dragging ass and really just have not or it could just be the USDA is dragging ass and they just have not updated the system. Nobody knows. But as soon as that information becomes available, I will share it with you guys. But that is absolutely all. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. Do me a favor. Don't forget to smash that like button. It really does help to let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to stick around. And I will definitely see you guys on Monday. Don't forget to live, love and elevate. And um, I will see you in the next video.
Peace, y'all.